Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel and welcome to day 79 woohoo, of the 100 day project. Now I have a gazillion things on my table here, far more than we can cover in any reasonable length video, but I do want to do a bit of talking. And of course this is directed, you know, as many of my videos are towards uh, beginners. I know that when I first started uh, watching YouTube videos and immersing myself into this whole junk journal um, world, half the time I didn't know what anybody was talking about because, of course, the terminology is different. Um, it was new to me. It was, and it, sometimes, honestly, it didn't always make sense. So you may or may not, as a beginner, have heard of fabric flips. Um, so this is what I wanted to talk to and sort of demonstrate today. Now, if you, you may know that I do a fair number of thrifting videos and not so long. Well, I don't even know if it's appeared to be honest, but this is just, you know, some of the fabric that I've acquired lace lately, and they are pieces that range from things like this to uh, what's the biggest one here maybe this one to you know huge and so what I did was I showed you I, I did a video about it and then I washed all of these and yesterday I finally got down to do the ironing so rather than just fold them oh and that's another thing I wanted to touch on of course, everyone has a different setup for how and where they're able to store their fabric. And I think there's probably not many people left in the world who don't know who Marie Kondo is. She's that sort of um, organizing expert who took the world by storm. Uh, can't remember the title of her book. It's a tiny little green book. But... One of the things she talked about in there, of course, was folding. And I think she was talking about it in terms of T-shirts. And, you know, to, to maximize the space in one's um, drawers. So, just, I mean, this is slightly off the topic, but related. So, hopefully you'll forgive me. So, basically what I do is I try to get things into as neat a rectangle as possible. So in this case, what I would do is fold this in half. And then because we want the edges to be neat, well, look, maybe I should turn it this way. And see, this is weird in that, um, I don't know if this was a bed sheet or a pillowcase or what, but it has at least one seam in it. But we'll pretend that it's okay. So then um, what she suggests, is turning one end in and turning the other end in and then folding it and then you have this nice neat little bundle so this could pretend that you know this could be a t-shirt so this is how I tend to fold my pieces of fabric if they're kind of small obviously if they were yards and yards and yards I mean it still works but it's just that you need a much bigger deeper drawer or shelf or whatever to put it on so I'll do that one more time just to show you. Okay, let's pick something a lot smaller. Um, okay, let's try this one. So this is basically, you know, kind of almost a single, I mean, this isn't, this isn't big at all. So same scenario, I'd fold it in half and make a long rectangle. And... I would fold it in and fold it in. This must not be perfectly square. Anyway, fold it in, fold it in, fold it over. Now, again, depend if I, because this is a very tiny little thing, if I was putting it in one of the drawers that I use for my teeny tiniest things, I might fold it one more time because maybe this is the depth of the drawer. So anyway, 
that's that was that was just a gift with purchase to, in today's video okay so what i did was before i turned on the camera i kind of went through this pile and if something was really an oddball shape maybe let me show you one like this this is oops this is pretty weird this is still pretty weird but what i did was i sort of straightened it or cut off things that were really kind of bizarre. So these are the pieces that I ended up with. And I also pre-tore them, um, thinking that, you know, if this is still too big for my purpose, I can cut it in half again or into thirds or whatever. And you can see when you buy, whoops, when you buy remnants, um, you know, you end up with, you know, either weird stuff or maybe damage, like that was a, obviously a scissor cut into it. So this one is a wee bit unusual in that the, those polka dots are so big and so far apart that I didn't think that this would work well for a fabric ruffle. And I should say, in case you've never seen it, that this is a short little fabric ruffle. So basically, with narrow strips, and again, this is, this is tied to kind of what I did in preparation um, for this video. So in some cases, when I kind of tried to square things off, I'll get rid of these polka dots. Um, when I tried to, um, you know, square things off, I ended up with little pieces like this. Well, I suppose I could throw them out, but at this point I haven't. Um, by the way, these, um, salvage edges that have, uh, either color, either words. No, that's not it. Words are a good thing to keep because if you wanted to make a fabric ruffle, you know, though that script would end up showing along the side of the ruffle. So basically, as I handled a piece of fabric, I tore off salvage edges, I kept these little oddball guys that could become a uh, part of a snippet. If the piece was, um, you know, kind of neither here nor there, and this was the last of it, again, it would go in a pile like that. Sometimes um, the pieces are, the piece, the remnant of fabric has been so cut so poorly and so crooked that um, tearing should, in theory, be one of the ways to, <clears throat> excuse me, to straighten out the piece. But let's look at this one. <clears throat> here it's, you know, an inch and a half, and here it peters down to a <laughs> quarter of an inch. <coughs> excuse me. And that particular fabric has really, it, it's pretty straightforward. You would think <clears throat> that whoever was using this <clears throat> excuse me, would have just cut down a line in either direction, but that wasn't the case. So anyway, I put aside, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dying in these strings here. Um, so I put aside a couple of these things because I was trying to straighten the piece out. So obviously these could be cut down at any point and used in snippets. So again, we'll just sort of put that on that pile. Uh, a couple of the, I showed you this green already. It looks like there's another piece or two. Again, weird sizes. This is another example I have of something that was cut so poorly. Look at the difference in width. So now, I've forgotten a lot of things in my day, but what I did remember is in home ec, 
we were taught the proper way to, to square off a piece of fabric. And again, for most purposes um, in the junk journal world, that is not going to matter um, because we're not sewing a garment that, you know, needs to hang right. Um, quite often we're, we're doing odd things, distressed things, things that are going to be covered and embellished, and it doesn't really matter. I should also say that sometimes, like there's a, this is a factory edge, a, a salvage edge. So I, <clears throat> I just cut, I snipped beside it and ripped this off so that um, these could be used either to decorate something or maybe this could be, even be a tie around something or on a tag. So I've got little itty bitty uh, strips like this. <clears throat> Again, you know, I shouldn't, I'm sure I shouldn't be saving all of this, but so far I am. <clears throat> so I was just, I, I'm just showing you this so that you would realize that you can use, uh, you can, for long enough pieces, you can sew ruffles. You can um, maybe get a tie out of something or a, uh, a tag. Um I mean, this is wide enough that it could be used, you know, probably could make a couple little journal covers. So there's there's a lot to there's a lot of mileage out of even the smallest piece of fabric. But anyway, that's not really why we're here. So with these piles, basically what I did was I tore fabric into um I don't want to say bite-sized pieces, but into smaller pieces so that I should get rid of this pile. Make a little more room here. I also pulled in some of this, some lace. So I have this stuff that's kind of loosely <laughs> rolled. So that's what that looks like. This was probably a curtain and I kind of just tore it in half lengthwise. So I have a couple pieces of that on the go here. Uh, I pre-cut a couple of those. <clears throat> this was the start of it. It must have had a mitered corner. So that probably goes in my snippet pile. Anyway, okay. So then I thought, and this was just these choices. Oh, and then I also have this. This is really wide. It's probably nine or 10 inches. 13 to three. Oh, maybe seven or eight. Anyway, um, I have all of this fabric kind of was all from one thrift haul. So in other words, I didn't uh, go ferreting around for other things that maybe would match better and, and turn it into a whole, <clears throat> excuse me, a whole adventure, a whole, um, you know, pro exercise and procrastination. I just decided... In fact, I did that as, as I was ironing. I kind of started making piles of different color families. So then today, when I brought this stuff to my desk, I began creating some, some um, combinations. So let me show you. This is a solid broad co uh, cloth. And you can see how, if you play your cards right, sometimes you can end up with a really nice fringe. I thought that looked great together. And it's just a two, it's a two layer thing. Maybe I would want it this way. Um, again, because that's probably sort of, that would read as right side up. Now, another thing I should say is that you might want to, you know, get a jar or, or something or a bowl or something that you keep nearby where you keep odds and ends of thread. If you go through a pile of fabric, you're going to end up with miles of thread. And quite often these are nice to use when uh, decorating something. So you know, again, you probably don't have to save every inch of it, but, you know, get a little bit of a stash going. Okay, so I've got this. 
Now you haven't seen all the fabrics, so you're going to kind of have to trust me on this, I guess. Then there's this one, a stark black and white design. And I thought, well, this solid looks really nice with it because any any solid would look really nice. With this, but this is what I happen to have, so this is what I'm using. This is actually off a themed one that's all about motorcycles. Now, am I ever going to do a motorcycle journal? I highly doubt it. But it's generic. This is generic enough that it would it would go. And maybe I want to add a wee bit of this. And and I guess it it depends too on how raggedy or not you want your your lace or your any of your stuff to look. If you don't want it to look frayed and and ratty, then use scissors by all means and so maybe I'll just kind of square this off a bit because the whole idea with making a fabric flip, and of course it can have as many layers or um, it can have as many layers as you choose. And typically there'd be sort of a stair step effect in that, you know, you wouldn't put, you wouldn't put the biggest one on top because it doesn't allow the others to shine through. So there's also nothing that says that it has to be um, that they all have to um, sort of uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Like they don't all have to taper in either. <clears throat> and maybe we'll come across some pieces where that is not the case. So if I don't want to cover uh, more of that pattern, then maybe I choose to do this. So again, a person has a choice. At this point, it could be stapled. It could, all the layers could be glued. Um, maybe just for the heck of it, I do have, I think I'm just going to pin this together for now. Simply because I think I'm going to run a line of stitching across all of these things. So just to hold them in position. Okay, so let's do that one. Let's maybe add a bit of the, the stuff that's a little more yellowy looking. And once you, once you get into it and get, kind of have an assembly line going, boy, that kind of really frayed, you can, um, you can get a lot done and really do quite a bit of um, scrap busting or, or clearing in not that much time. So, okay, just again, design choice your your decision you can like i've i'm showing some of that rust color under on either side i could have this over to one side or the other i could have this over to to a side and it could be sewn that way so you know maybe we should mix it up and i'll leave it that way so again it it boils down to what pleases your eye um, <clears throat> sometimes if the strips are narrow or if I was using lace that is narrow and on a roll, I thought I had pre-arranged or pre-chosen some other things. Uh, well, I'll just randomly grab something. So I also had a few squares of this, um, maple leaf stuff. And it just so happens that one of those colors goes well with that same um, rust color that we that I've just been showing you. Now, I don't think I would ever want my top layer to be a solid color, but maybe I want to, and again, you know, the whole trick here is not to agonize over this too much. Um, Maybe I want to put lace on top. So I'll just randomly, and again, there's no magic or 
um, rule about <laughs> about um, how much you know of of the fabric underneath is supposed to show. Again, the only person you need to please is yourself. So most of us don't have that reality in our real life in our real lives so if if that's what you're being offered <clears throat> in your craft room then <laughs> grab it and run with it again how much trimming or pulling of loose threads you do is your choice as well so this i like that fringy side better so i would i'm thinking though that Maybe that is a bit much. Again, I'm just, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to walk the talk here and not uh, spend too much agonizing over this. <clears throat> I think, though, I will trim a bit more off the top because this is, it's a great color for setting off detail, but it's not that interesting on its own. And of course, um, once you have these things sewn or glued or stapled or whatever, they then typically get added to a, a journal page and they just become a decorative thing that people can lift up and, you know, maybe there's something hidden underneath or maybe that's a, a little secret journaling spot or, or maybe you've stamped an image under there. and <clears throat> Surprise! So... I can use this. Now I may decide that I want to kind of scuff it up, roughen it up a bit. This one is pretty tightly woven, so nothing much is happening here. So maybe I should just get that off there. And whoops, that looks like the wrong sign. creased corner doesn't want to cooperate so I'll put it up and out of out of the way I'll just show you a few more and of course <clears throat> this is just to to plant the seed of some ideas obviously the fabric you have at your disposal will be different than what I have so there's not much point in I'm I'm just basically talking about my thought process. So here I've got two different sizes of polka dots. And, you know, if a person wanted a lighthearted themed um, journal, then certainly this could be, this could be it. Um, and again, you know, some of these things, even though I've cut the pieces you know, kind of at a random, um, random size. I think that if it was the, like that, I don't know that I can't. Why? Why am I? Why am I doing that? Don't let me do that. I was going to say I'm going to trim the top to bring that fuchsia or raspberry color up higher, but I don't need to. Or I can use, I can put this piece this way and have this cover up more of that green and most of that white block and it will still all hang together. Maybe that seems a bit narrow there. Maybe I'll move that over. See, this is why nothing ever gets used up, because we keep trimming and making more, more parts. Okay, I think that looks better. So I'll show you a couple more. Um, oh, so on this one, again, 
This is a, a much narrower one, same, same fabrics, narrower though, because, um, oh, and I knew, I think I know what I was planning here. Again, I like that hot pink there more so than the blue, although there is blue in this top fabric, but I might choose to do that. So let's just do that and we'll snip this off. Now this is probably, th that will end up on the snippet pile. And maybe lace isn't something that would really go with something like this, so I'm just gonna not bother. Now if you had some lace medallions or, um, well, appliques, I guess, or little bits off, um, what do you call them, doilies, you know, you could add that as well. So then I have, um, okay, I've already shown you this. So I have a few blue things here as well. Let me get this pink out of the way because we've seen that. You've seen that. Now this is kind of wild. So I don't know if there will be something to put with that or not. Um, let's put it over here for the time being. So as not to forget it. Okay, I really like this. Whoops. I have a couple pieces of it. It's got orange in it. Now, what we could do, you can see that, so I can cut this in half and make something smaller. In fact, I probably will do that. <clears throat> I hope you're well. I hope you don't have a frog in your throat. Okay. So we know there's a smidge of yellow in there. We know that there's blue in this. So this could um, go together. Or maybe we just want to stagger it like so. Whoops. Um, I also have these other blues, this little blue hound's tooth. And this I think is Harry Potter uh, fabric. Kind of looks a wee bit dull in comparison to these vibrant colors, but that's okay. Maybe that goes at the back because it's uh, maybe not that attractive. Um, these, this light blue polka dot, these scissors, these great big polka dots. Now there's no white in this one, but do we care? So again, you can just lay, if you have sort of pre-ripped some pieces, you can just lay them out like I'm doing. Now this was crooked I didn't bother squaring it off because maybe having a, a the bottom angled would be a nice look so uh, may let's see what else you know maybe that becomes one Or do I want a smidge? Boy, that would really brighten it up. <clears throat> I'm just flipping through these little orange things. I mean, not orange, yellow things. And it covers up the dot. You know, so, so that, let's just clip it together. So there's that one. So we have these that are sort of part way. Um, let's see. 
let's see what we can do with this. So we have the pale polka dot. We have the hound's tooth. And maybe we want to put this over here and this over here. That way, since, like I said, those dots are so few and far between, but if we do it that way, they'll still be visible. And then maybe we want a bit of this, some these scissors. You know, it introduces a new color, but hey, so what? So we'll cut this here. Oh, and I've been forgetting about the lace now. Maybe we can slap this on here. And that, whoops, let's pull these dots down. Or do I want the lace partly covering that? Okay, another one done. And of course, when I get, whoops, boy, this, these pins are so thick, but strong. Uh, when I get all this to the sewing machine, I will decide if I'm going to pick white or black or navy or gray or some whatever color. Oh, I also had this that I thought kind of would look good with blue. It's got, it doesn't have that much blue on it, but it, um, it does have those things that almost read as orange. Anyway, I, th um, I was saying about the thread. Or sometimes I batch my sewing based on, okay, well, this all needs brown thread. This pile needs blue thread. You know, so, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let me have a swig of water. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. How would this look with this? Maybe I have to cut this in half. Maybe this goes with this. Almost looks like a bullseye on there. Maybe this is a two-parter. Or let's put a bit of lace on there. Slide this over a smidge. Have that there. And depending how I feel at the time, I might just cut part of that bottom off. Simply because, in fact, I'm going to do it right now. Um, and if you like the frayed look, of course, at any point, you can just start pulling on the threads and creating a bit of fringe for yourself. So, you know, basically, I, th I hope what you're seeing is that there really is no wrong combination um, that it can be, there can be as many pieces to this as many layers to these flips as you choose or as your fabric sort of dictates Oops, side is not very frayed so maybe i'll turn it this way oh i still haven't really used this have i and i have more of these polka dots Maybe what I'll do is cut this lengthwise. <laughs> I'm always amazed at how when you're trying to do that with an audience, it just doesn't doesn't want to go.
So as long as, you know, you're stitching, and there's nothing, you know, I, I could be stitching a quarter of an inch down or half an inch down. There's nothing that... Uh, that says, you know, that there's only one place to stitch this either. So this ends up being quite a thick bundle. There are three, four, five fabrics. Maybe what I should do, how about if I cut off a little hunk of this? I wonder if this will tear worth a darn. Whoa. Apparently not. I'll we'll just kind of raggedy cut it. See, and can you tell that I'm trying really hard to start using my stuff and not save it for, who knows, some magical day in the future that may never come? Um, thinking that, ooh, better not use that. It's so precious. So... This is probably too long. Let's cut it, excuse me, cut it in half. Oh, dear. Uh, cut it in half. Get two pieces. Probably want... Now, what will I put with this? I guess I could keep working on the blues, but I can also show you some of the green that I... Maybe I'll use one of these just for the heck of it. You know, so so this could just be a... a um, a two-piecer, the poly cotton or cotton, whatever it is, and the lace. I mean, it allows the pattern to show through, so that's nice. Uh, that's too gaudy. What might I use here? That is too... Maybe that wasn't the greatest one to try. Hmm. That doesn't look very good together, I would say. That was probably a poor choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at that. I could also put another lace on top. Maybe I'll just cut it above this leafy part. Whoops. Or I could also use some of this. It has some green in it. Okay. Change of plan. Uh, that could be... I just hope you can see where... Oh, this pattern is kind of far apart. Okay, this has more more color on it so we will let's just snip this here now do I want it extending past there mm. Let's see, where's that piece that I cut off the lace? That seems too wide. Maybe I'll just ratty this up a bit. some of that fuzz oh and I also have this this could probably go under there as well put the wider side down put this across the top and now we have something perhaps a little more 
See, I kind of, I'm going to take some of this off. don't really like the width of it. Okay, so we've got the green. We've got this. We'll run this along the side so as not to really cover up too many of the flowers. And then we'll put this on. And we've got something oh so beautiful. Okay, I should pay attention to the time. I think you have, um, by now you have a really good idea of what the possibilities are. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, not much time, considering I did talk about a few other things. Um, quite a few of these got one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in that short time and that was with me you know showing you a few other things so I think that this is a good way to get rid of some some pieces of fabric and some pieces of lace that you probably really loved otherwise you wouldn't have bought it or saved it and um, it just uh, it would also be, it would also represent some ready-made items for the, uh, for your projects. This isn't, this also isn't very straight. I think I'm going to cut this salvage off. And lay this down. I might want, do I want to poke it out across the top? Notice, polka dot, singular. <laughs> ah, dear. Whoops. I keep flipping this lace over. I think this is the way it goes. <clears throat> Just going to trim this a bit. <laughs> I've never used a single polka dot before. Ah, oh, goofy. Put a little smidge of let's just pretend that was there. Yeah, see that adds so so you can never you can never craft your way out of oh out of scraps. Because you just keep making more. I can't remember. Maybe this one doesn't rip. Or maybe I didn't. I don't have enough. Oh, I didn't have enough to grab onto. Okay, let's put the nice fringy side out so it shows. We'll put this on here and this on here. Or did I have? I think I had this on top of the. Did I have it on top or did I? Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is how it's going. Okay, I am stopping here. This was, I believe, day... I usually write a little cheat sheet note to myself. I think this was day 79. So we've got a few, we've got a ways to go yet. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, take a good look at your scraps and uh, see if you can make a pile of flips in no time at all. See you tomorrow, guys. Thanks. Bye.